Hello, this is Ed Rigsby, and welcome to another cigar review. Hey, it's been a while. Well, today, what I have for you is HC Cigars by AJ Fernandes out of Nicaragua. We're going to be talking about one of their, um, whoops, got to get over the camera here, one of their Maduro cigars. So this is a fresh box. It's been sitting in my humidor, oh, probably about a good year, year and a half. I, um, I know some people like to buy their cigars and smoke them right away, but, um, you know, not so much for myself. Hey, you know what I just realized? This is pretty tacky on my part, but what the hell? I got to grab an ashtray. So, here's my ashtray. Ah, oh, much better. This is a cool ashtray one. This is a uh, Italian glass ashtray. Um, I don't know if my uh, good buddy Lindsay uh, Adams is listening, but um, he and I were together when I picked it up. It's, uh, it's an ashtray I just love. I have way more ashtrays than I, I need, or I have way more ashtrays than I should, but, you know, what the hell. Now, I'm also going to talk to you today. I'm not going to like this just yet. I'm also going to talk to you about Blaum Brothers Distilling Company. They have a straight bourbon whiskey, 50% alcohol. That means 100 proof. And it's di uh, distilled in Galena, Illinois. Now, on the back, you're going to love this. On the back, it says, instead of inserting a hacky and fabricated story here, we will instead declare that we are a couple of scrupulous and unframed brothers whose sipping whiskeys have come unstowed. Scare up a glass and enjoy. Cheers. Mike Blaum, Matt Blaum. Um, and their website is www.illinoisbourbon.com. So here we go. This is kind of exciting. This is, uh, as you see, it's a bottle that I haven't tried yet. So... I'm hoping it's good, but who knows, you know, might be crap, but we'll find out in just a minute. And um, just uh, for fun and to um, talk to you a little bit, uh, if you notice, I've got my, um, my Aloha shirt today. Usually I always have an Aloha shirt. This is a Hilo Hattie. This is one of my vintage Hilo Hattie Aloha shirts. And I kind of bemoan a little bit because you know, one of the most favorite things that my wife and I would always love to do in Waikiki, we'd stay in Waikiki, we'd take the bus out to Hilo Hattie's and, uh, you know, look around at their stuff and then go next door to Sam Choi's and have lunch and take the bus back. Um, Hilo Hattie's is gone. There's uh, at least their, their main facility is, I think, one or two little stores somewhere. But, you know, for so many years they had, uh, you know, Aloha shirts for the men, the women, the kids all matching. It was, uh, it was wonderful. It's what I grew up with in the, in the 60s. So let's open this up. First time. Pour it. Mm. Ooh, that's good. Oh, I guess I should let the stage and I'm pouring it. Look at that nice color. Very pretty. Here, I'll put it up close. Oh, yeah. Check that out. Again, Blaum Brothers Distilling out of Galena, Illinois. So um, here we go. Uh, it's, it's 100 proof, so it's not going to be weak sauce. So let's take a little bit of a taste. And um, mm, that's very good. Mm. You notice there's a fly buzzing around me? I think the fly wants my bourbon, but I'm not going to give the fly my bourbon. Okay, as I always talk to you about, my trusty V-cutter. I love the V-cutter. It's what you should all have. Now, most people, I shouldn't say most, but so many people will use the V-cutter uh, only for round uh, head cigars. I will also use it on a torpedo. So just to take a look at this before I cut it, uh, I guess I should move it over here. Bring it back a little bit so it'll focus. Okay, well, I guess it's about as good a focus as you're gonna get. Um, HC Black, it's Maduro, by AJ Fernandez out of Nicaragua. 
I'm going to um, very carefully I'll try to show you what I'm doing here. I'll go in and just try to cut a teeny bit. I don't want to overcut, but check this out. Now, is that an awesome cut? So if you look at this, now what it's going to do, it's going to bring the flavor to me in a very unique way. If I were to cut it straight across, it would be very different. When you use this V cutter on a uh, round head cigar, the cool thing is, is you keep the tobacco away from your tongue. Even with the uh, torpedo, cutting it straight, you're going to get the tobacco close to your tongue. So we're going to uh, get my uh, triple head lighter here that I got free from uh, either Cigar International or Cigar.com, one of the two. And let's see what we got going here. Let's get this thing lit. <coughs> okay, well, I'll do it like that. That way you can see the P, which makes it look really impressive or something like that. Now, I know everybody has a different way of lighting their cigars, and I don't know who's right or who's wrong. Probably doesn't matter. However you like to light your cigars is probably the right way for you. I like to toast my cigar. I like to just keep turning it and keep that butane on it and get that puppy warm. So the foot warms up. And if the foot warms up, then the first puff, I think, is going to be a better puff. So if you can look at it, you'll see it, it's 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 pretty much lit. I'll take the last puff with the flame on it. I guess I should say I'll take the last bit, but that's really the first puff. The thing I like about Cigar from AJ Fernandez is just about all of them are really good flavor. Now, this is a probably three quarters or so full body. And the, you know, as I look at it, you know, it, it, it's, it's not an expensive cigar. But if you look at the construction, it's very nice. I, I see right here, there's a little bit of a vein. But, you know, it, it's actually a very attractive cigar. Nice and oily, which gives you a nice flavor. You know, the funny thing is, is, you may have this too, but I get a lot of people that say they, they, they get a cigar for me in who knows where, maybe a Cuban cigar. And they've had it sitting in their desk for six months and they finally give it to me. And I go, oh, thank you so much. And I take it home and throw it away. Because, you know, when the um, wrapper of a cigar dries out, what's really happening is the oils are going into the atmosphere. And while you can put it in a humidor and rehumidify it, and get it soft again, you're never gonna get the same flavor because the oils that have evaporated, they're gone forever. So I usually get my HC cigars either, um, and I hate to not promote a, a brick and mortar store, but I either get mine at uh, cigarsinternational.com uh, or cigar.com. They're both the same company. They're out of uh, Pennsylvania. Uh, I was told they're owned by General Cigar. I don't know that for a fact, but, you know, wouldn't surprise me if they were. If you ever get the opportunity to go to um, uh, Cigar International, their flagship store in, uh, in Pennsylvania, outside of Hershey, it's, it's amazing. It, it's, it is so amazing. It's, it's kind of like, you know, the Mecca. Okay, so the cigar at the first puff, we've got some decent flavors. kind of a, a cocoa and a spice flavor. Not much of a leather or straw, which I particularly don't care for those that much anyway. The draw on this is, it's, it's amazing how good this draw is. I'm gonna have to keep this cigar box away from all my cigar buddies because they're gonna smoke them up. Um, but it, it's it's got a, it's got a great draw, very nice draw. Um, it, it's a beautiful wrapper. And if you look, it's, it's burning nice and evenly. There's no canoeing. So let's talk about the bourbon for just a minute. Now, I'm a, a lover of craft bourbons. And um, I have to admit, one of the way I get 
one of the ways I get bourbons that I probably never get otherwise is I run a nonprofit charity called the Scarpe. And we put on a big event every year at the National Speakers Association. And I ask people to bring bottles and donate to the suite. And, you know, every year there's one or two left over. And guess what? I bring them home. This is one of those. This is one of the bottles that was left over uh, a year ago. And um, I'm not sure. Might have been Jud Judson Lapley that brought it. I'm not completely sure who brought it. But it's, it's, it's a very good bottle. So if you uh, have the ability to find Blaum Brothers, look at the color of this. It, it's, let me see if I can get you. Oh yeah, yeah, look at this. Look at that color. It, it's, there's almost a, 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 a golden tinge to the, uh, to the dark spirit. Now, we all know that, that how this tinge, is, this brown color comes, is from the uh, neutral whiskey sitting up in a charred oak barrel. And so that charred oak um, is what the liquid pulls the color and pulls the flavor off of, which gives that caramel. But just, I'm, I'm really impressed with the color. Uh, kind of, I know I'm going a little bit overboard on it, but what the hell. It's got this interesting finish that hits the top of the back of my throat and, and then the bottom of the back of my throat. It, it's, you know, if you try different whiskeys right next to each other, you're going you're gonna to notice that the finish affects your throat in different ways. I was over at a friend's house, uh, 4th of July, he was giving me different pinots, and the pinots that were, were hitting my, my palate and, and exploding in, in, in different parts of my mouth. And we were talking about that, and uh, maybe I'm just weird, I don't know, but I've just really noticed over the years that various um, spirits, whether it be beer, whether it be wine, whether it be hard liquor, if you, if you really pay attention, where's the finish? And this has got a really nice finish. So there's, there's, there's a lot of good flavor, a lot of caramel in it, kind of a butterscotchy. You can taste the char from the, uh, the barrel. You can, um, um, it's not strong on the corn, so that's good. And um, it's just a very pleasant bourbon. Now, it is a little bit higher alcohol content, so 100 proof. I mean, so much of the bourbons that we buy are um, uh, 80 proof, so 40% alcohol. And this is a little bit higher. Um, and so, you know, maybe you have to drink a little bit slower. But it's, um, it's great, great. Cool. Here are my recommendations. Buy yourself a Colibri V cutter. You'll be glad you did. If you have the opportunity to find some Blaum Brothers straight bourbon whiskey, get some. Now, you, you, I'm sure most people know, but just in case you didn't, to be called bourbon, it has to be distilled from a neutral spirit and the mash has to be 51% corn. Also, it has to be um, set up in new charred oak. Those are the specifications to be called bourbon. Um, you probably saw one of my reviews from my friend Dave Brandt, who has Sesame Creek Distillery, and he's doing the, um, uh, the Southwest Mesquite uh, bourbon. And uh, he and the government are having discussions on what he calls it, but you know, it, it, it's the the craft bourbon movement in the United States has utterly exploded. I mean, it's almost impossible to go anywhere in the country and not find a craft distillery. It is just the coolest thing in the world. I mean, while I love Maker's Mark and uh, Woodford Reserve and Blanton's and you know uh, Elijah Craig, you know all the old standards, I got to tell you, it's just the most fun when you can go not only try a new cigar, HC Black, HC Maduro Black, 
and a new whiskey. Well, that's about it for today. Those are my recommendations. That's my story and I'm sticking to it. And I'll sit here and just bemoan a little bit that Elo Hattie is gone. I, um, I, I, I do treasure all of my vintage Aloha shirts. Although some of you that watch my reviews from years ago, I have had to drop some weight because of uh, glucose levels. So my youngest son, Jonathan, who's far more buff than me, he's gotten all of my little bit larger Aloha shirts, like 20 or 30 of them. Kind of hate to, hate to give them up, but you know, what the hell? Give it to your kid, why not? Hey, that's another little topic. I mean, um, I realize that this is totally off of, uh, off the wall and, and out in left field, but you know, something that I believe in, if you've got kids and you got stuff that your kids want, don't wait till you croak. Give it to them while you're alive. You know, I give my kids all kinds of stuff of mine. If I really miss it, I'll go buy another. But you know, the thing is for our kids, and I'm talking about our adult kids, you know, it, it's, it, it is so valuable to them to have a little piece of us. And if we give it to them while we're still alive, it's hugely more valuable. So if your kid wants something, if it's not a major imposition, I mean, I, I'm not gonna give them my wedding ring just yet, but you know, if it's not, you got a bug it bit me. If it's not a major imposition, what the heck? Why wouldn't you give it to them now and let them enjoy having it while you're still alive? Well, you know, wish you the best. And uh, hopefully we'll get back together on another one of my cigar reviews. Thanks so much. And, um, you know, I'll catch you on the backside.